Uh, anyway, right. that that's all I've yeah. got in the news here today, guys. Let's move right into our last segment and uh, one that I have a lot of fun with, Tyler. I got to tell you, you know, these are the conversations that you and I and Matt have had privately and in other coaching meetings uh, just externally outside of, uh, you know, webinars and whatnot for 15, 16 years around the options market, around implied volatility, around the best way to build a certain spread trade or whatever it might be. And uh, we're calling this segment uh, Jedi Options, where Coach Tyler gets to take his expertise, his experience in the options market it, dive into a topic around it, uh, whatever it may be on that week, uh, depending on what's happening in the markets, kind of deep dive on it and really geek out with option math. So Tyler, what you got here today and what are we setting up? Yeah. So today we're going to illustrate how to use one of the tools that we provide at uh, tackletrading.com, the uh, tackle trading, the theta research spreadsheet. So the for those that are pro members you you get access to these uh tim i'll pull up the website here real quick so under the trade center under journals that's where you can download the journals and there's some videos that we put together that explain how to use it um but you know i i compare option strategies i usually bring a couple option picks i i wanted to just make this a little bit more robust conversation and use the journal to help kind of pitch how I would build bull put spreads in, in particular. Right? I think it's fantastic. And if you scroll down just one hair here, I do want to highlight something. There's three different journals. And the one we're going to be highlighting today, the trade journal is where you log your trades, you know, your gains, your losses. You can keep an equity curve over time. The Theta Research Tool, and you've clicked that tab right there, Tyler. Uh, this is where you can download that tool. If you are a pro member, it's included in your pro membership at Tackle Trading. Make sure you're logged in. You go to the events page. You can find it right here. And there's a download button just underneath it. And, uh, you know, one thing as we get started here, I love of using this as a visual way to educate and to teach people. There's no question about that. Uh, it's a significant value for any option trader to download this and understand it. Matt, many years as I've been coaching people or working with them one-on-one, -on -one, we spend a lot of time in this research journal. And I know that you've, uh, you've spent a lot of time in here. And in fact, you're the one who came up with the concept ROID, which Coach Tyler is going to highlight here in just a minute. Uh, anyway, I'm glad you brought up the events page there. Um, Matt, as we set up the conversation, though, uh, just what's your, what, what do you think about the, the importance of ROID and kind of explain that just a little bit if you can? Well, first and foremost, ROID is just a simple indicator that we use at Tackle Trading to determine whether or not a credit received is actually a legitimate credit from a, from a, uh, from a cash flow perspective. And when ROID was created, it was created about, honestly, it was created. I first started teaching ROID about 10 years ago, but I, I legitimately started putting it out there in 2013 and 2014. But when I first learned how to do credit spreads, and Tyler, if you'll go to an option chain, any option chain, when I first learned how to do credit spreads, basically the, the general philosophy was, if you're selling a credit and you're getting about 10% against the against the margin required, you got a good credit, right? And and that always that always just didn't I don't know about you guys and and I'm talking to the entire community, but have you ever had a moment where somebody taught you something and you immediately started thinking it's got to be more in depth than that. Mm -hmm. it, it it can't just be that. Because when you compare A against A without comparing it against something else, how do you know if it's good or not, quite frankly? And that's mm -hmm. just the way my analytical mindset works is I always do cross comparisons. And, and so when, you're, when, when I first learned how to do a bull put spread, basically what I was taught was if we sell around a 0 0.20 delta, uh, which is a 20 delta, and we get a about and we get a minimum standard of ten percent of the uh, of the return. That's a good credit. Well, after I started doing a lot of credit trades, a lot of bull puts, a lot of bear calls, over time I started seeing that not ten not all ten percent credits are created equal, right? And sometimes you have to deal with volatility and sometimes you have to deal with ranges and sometimes you have to deal with other things in, in, in credit trading as well. And so I started doing some research regarding, okay, if I sell 10s, 12s, 15s, 18s, 20, 25, 30, one deltas, right? I started doing a whole bunch of just research regarding 
if we sold this delta versus this volatility, where is that zone that, that we really want to be in? And what I had found is that the 10% of credit was random, was, was purely random. And what it was really about was comparing the delta against the credit received, which, which was important. And yeah, 10% could be good if you were selling a 10 or a 12 delta. But if you were selling a 20 delta to get that 10%, it, it just, to, in my mind, it just didn't, it, it, it wasn't good enough. And so I started doing analysis of, of taking deltas versus cash flow received on different time frames and started studying this over time to find out where those zones were. Where is the zone on ROID that we're looking for? For example, if you got a, if, if you're selling a, a 20 delta contract and you're getting 10% of the spread, that would be a 50 ROID because you take delta and you divide it by ROI is what you do to establish the ROID. Now, without the historical metrics of what is good versus bad, again, ROID's just an indicator. A 50 ROID without a comparison doesn't make sense either. What you're looking for is those historical zone, zones on ROID to really establish a, a good credit. And so if you'll go to the spreadsheet, for example, there's a couple key things that I'd like to point out to the, to the community. Number one, the spreadsheet was designed so that you just have to fill out the data. So you take the data that you, that you need based on the systems, and if you and if you'll scroll down just a little bit here, uh, Tyler, you'll kind of see some metrics of what we like to look at from delta sold time frames, what you're what you really are kind of targeting from a ROID perspective. So there is some metrics there as well. But if you'll scroll back up, what we do is, is when we're looking for a credit, we might actually fill out. 10 to 15 different potential credits just across compared to find the the two that are really good again uh, trader one that is new to the market they see a credit they sell a credit real traders do research real traders do cross comparisons to find that zone and so what you want to do in the in the in the in the theta research spreadsheet is you simply identify the stocks you want to research, the different time frames that you want to research, and then you just start filling out data. That's all mm -hmm. you do. You fill out the price, you fill out the ATR. The month, I, I never fill out the month, it's just for people visually when I'm teaching them, uh, but you just fill out the month. The DTE is the important point in the metric though. DTE stands for days till expiration. So I might be selling a July option, but I might be selling, might be cross comparing that against a weekly July option, which means the month to me is not important, but the 30 days or 37 days or 44 days is important to me. And so DTE stands for day till expiration. You just put that in. And so today we got, uh, what's the, the July expiration 30 days from now? 30. Yeah. Okay, so it'd just be 30 days on the monthly, right? Short option strike is the strike price on the delta we're selling. Short option delta, you fill it out with a fraction. If it says 16, you write in 0.16. Long option strike is the strike price you're buying to create the spread. ATR buffer is something that is automatically given. So once again, when you take your price and you take the ATR, what the ATR buffer is, is the, is the total amount of ATRs that you are selling the strike price versus what the current stock price is. And if you'll hover very quickly, Tyler, above ATR buffer, you'll see, you'll see a little bit of a drop down that what we want to see here is a minimum of two. And so when we're selling a 30 day option, you have to be getting at least two, uh, two ATR ranges. And the reason that is important for me is if you're getting less than if you're getting less than two ATR on the strike price to the stock price, that's your range you're selling before your credit is in danger. If you're less than two ATRs, personally, I would rather treat that as a directional opportunity because you are not getting the range necessary to justify the risk. Remember, in a credit spread, guys, you can always lose more money than you can make. ATR ranges is your buffer. That is, and, and if a stock goes down, that's not necessarily a negative. It's if the stock goes underneath the strike sold. And so having the range necessary on a credit spread is very important. Less than two, that's a deal breaker for me. Less than two, 
either one, it's not a good credit trade because of volatility, or two, it's not a good credit trade because the better trade is most likely on the directional side of the equation. And so it just it's one of those telltale signs. And you'll see as we fill it out, if we do have an ATR under under two, it'll it'll fill it out red. If you scroll over to the right a little bit, the net credit is the credit you are receiving on the on the on the sell of the spread. BPE stands for buying power effect. Now, this is a debate that many traders have had internally and with other traders. When you calculate your, your ROI, do you take the margin required or do you take the difference in the spread? What we do in the spreadsheet, according to Royd, is we take the difference in the, in the margin. And so if you're selling a five-point spread, we don't type in $500. We, we type in what is the actual buying power effect. And so if you receive 50 cents on the credit and you have a $5 spread, the buying power on that is going to be $450. So you take the five minus the 50, that's $450. Tyler will show you how to do that in your, in your Thinkorswim software. It's, it's done automatically for you. I just wanted to add the context to it. And then the alert, and, and what I like about the alert is the alert is it's based on one half the ATR above strike sold when you're doing a bull put. So for researching bull put spreads and we've identified, you know, three or four good candidates, what I like to do after the trade is put on is I want to set an alert above the strike we're selling. I don't I I, I want to be alerted to a potential risky situation where I may need to do some trade adjustments or we may need to, to make some trading decisions. Remember, where the risk is in a bull put spread or any credit spread, it's not when it's above the strike price. That's the zone that you're in. You're good. It's when the strike price is hit and it goes underneath the strike price. We want to be alerted before that occurs. And so we put an alert, one half ATR above the strike is sold so that we know that, we, uh, that we're in that risky situation and we need to be more aware of what is happening. So the alert is just simply one half ATR above the strike that is sold. So that is the indication where you need to put an alert to, uh, to have trade management discussions. I just wanted to take a moment to kind of explain the spreadsheet. I think that really helps. It helps set up uh, what we're going to be doing next here, Tyler, because now you're going to be filling out a few of these here in the spreadsheet. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I got to tell everybody out there, if you are a pro member and you don't have a copy of this, I've been doing this for a long time, grab one of these copies, start playing around with it. Use the tutorial here from Tyler, get an idea on how to fill them out. But I would fill an entire one out, you know, look at different spreads within the same stock, all that kind of stuff. So Tyler, let's see how it works. Uh, kind of walk us through this if you can. Yeah. So Roblox is a stock we talked about earlier today. And I think it's got an interesting uh, setup for a credit spread. So I'm going to compare two credit spreads on Roblox, one with a little bit higher delta, one with a little bit lower delta. And, and then we're going to compare that to maybe some other couple other ticker symbols uh, and, and see what the difference in returns look like versus the volatility of the stocks. And you'll start to get some some interesting takeaways here. So so Roblox, I'm in my trade tab in Thinkorswim. The stock price is 82.65. And I'm gonna do this twice, so I'll throw both in there. The average true range, I find that on my chart. I have a little um, indicator that tells me what the ATR is, $6.34. That's essentially how much this is moving on average per day. It's a little high right now because of, because of the recent volatility in the stock. Uh, obviously, if an $82 stock is moving six bucks a day, that's that's a big percentage move, right? I suspect that number will come down over time. We're going to be using the July monthly options. Uh, this part's not super important, as as Matt said, but I'm going to put the July in there. Days to expiration. So when I look at my option chain back on the trade tab, the days to expiration is this number in parentheses. So right now, we it's actually a pretty good time to illustrate this because the math is easy. We, we are exactly 30 days from next month's expiration on the monthly. So 30 days is the uh, DTE. And Tyler, can I take a, just a quick moment to explain something that is fairly important here? If yeah. you widen the spreadsheet out a little bit, what the spreadsheet does on the key metrics is it always reverts to a standard 30-day number. Because sometimes we'll sell 35 days, sometimes 42 days, sometimes 23 days. 
And so what the standard ROI does, the ROI in the performance metrics is just based on whatever the like credit received 48 days, whatever it is. Yep. But what I like to do is standardize everything to that 30 day number, which will help me visually adjust to different time frames. Yeah. And the implication there is if I get a 5% return on a 30 day trade, and I'm comparing that to a 5% return on a 10 day trade, it's not apples to apples. Right. No, it, 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 it's not. It's not. And we'll, we'll kind of look at that as the, as the metrics get uh, laid out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so with, with Roblox, I'm going to go to July and I generally want to sell a bull put with a Delta less than uh, 20 or so. So the first one I want to illustrate is the 16 Delta, which is the 70 uh, strike price. I'm going to sell that and I'm going to buy the 65. So we've got a $5 wide vertical spread where the short option is a 16 delta. So short option strike is 70, delta 16, long option strike is 65. The net credit is 77 cents. Well, 75 now, go 75. Now I can do the BPE in my head just because I've done it a million times, but if, if you don't know what the buying power effect is, you can go to confirm and send. And in the preview box, it'll tell you right here, buying power effect, $425, which is just the $5 spread minus 75 cents. All right, so 425 is the BPE. Mm -hmm. So now I've got some information, right? I've got some information here. And did I, let's see. Uh, change your, uh, off change on your, one of these? Yeah, change, on. change your credit. Oh, that's why. Yeah. There we go. All right, so net credit's a whole number. Actually, it could be 0.75, but then you got to do If you change scale, the other right? one, yeah. You just got to be consistent. Funny. I'm mm -hmm. with you. Okay, so $75 credit, $425 BPE. There we go, now looks right. Um, Okay, so, so the return on investment is a 17.6% return. The reason that's the exact same as the standard ROI is because both of them are 30 days, right? If mm -hmm. this was a 25-day time frame, the standard ROI would be- In fact, just different. change just it change. to 25 just to illustrate it. Yeah, because if I'm making 17% in 25 days, yeah. if, you, if you do that on a 30-day basis, it'd actually be more over 30 days. In other words, it's better to make 17% in 25 days than it is to make it in, in yes. 30 days. Yeah. So, okay, a couple comments, Matt, and then you, then you can mention anything that I didn't, I didn't yeah. mention here. But so 17.6% so is a good ROI for a credit spread in general, right? We, that 10% mm -hmm. number uh, as kind of the ideal ROI target, 10%, we're obviously exceeding that. Yes. But, the question is, what is the likelihood I'm going to get the okay. 17%? This, this is, I, I love this conversation because everybody and their dog went to that 17.6%. Yep. Everybody did. And yet that number was very irrelevant to me. The number that was important to me was the standardized ROID in comparison to the standard ATR buffer. What that ROID is telling me is I am getting a significant return for the Delta we are selling. That is what it's telling me. Anything above 100% is ridiculous on the credit. With the ATR at two, you're at a minimum standard there. What this tells me is that this is a, this is a decent trade. The ROI, people would say this is a great trade. I don't think so. I think this is a very mediocre trade because you do not have the range necessary to justify the volatility scale on, on Roblox. And while I certainly do agree that Roblox has had some news in recent history and that ATR could contract, Roblox is an aggressive growth company that it will always trade at a higher ATR than others, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so that could happen. But right now we know what is happening with the volatility. And so what this tells me is that I need to give up a little bit. of. If I like the Roblox technical situation, I need to look at giving up some of that potential return to get more ATR ranges. I have enough volatility that I could be conservative here is what I'm suggesting. And so what I would do is I would say, okay, 
I'm selling a 16 Delta, which is perfectly fine for a bull put spread. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just not getting the range necessary to justify this type of risk. In, in my opinion, two is a minimum standard. Other people could take it. But I would like to see a lower delta on the same time frame to see if I can if the number still makes sense with the credit where it needs to be. But now I'm getting a little bit more range. Guys, ranges to me are, are probably even more important than the ROI is to me on a credit. Mm hmm. Yeah, Guys, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to manage credit trades. Well, sure, because even if you get this huge credit, you get this big ROI, and it's smashing you in the face. Like that's exciting. If the volatility is too close to where your cushion is, uh, if you don't have the distance you need, the management uh, degree. To, if I have to, to manage inside. a credit spread, it's because technically it violated a lot of things. That's right. Yep. And yep. and and so technically, there there's just concern there. So. What I would like to see, and again, it's based on the fact that we have a, a much more than the 80% on ROID. And if you go to standard ROID, just kind of hover up on it, you'll see the metrics. Anything over 80 is good, guys. Like, mm -hmm. fantastic. Anything 60 to 80 on the ROID is, is average. Anything under 60, you're just not getting the credit to justify anything here. And so I know I'm well over my minimum thresholds on what would be considered a great credit. That tells me... I have credit to play with here. I'm willing to give up some of that credit to improve the standardized ATR buffer so that I don't have to make decisions. Guys, we do not want to make decisions in credit trades. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so then to, to illustrate what you would do here, you're saying, let's see if I can go a little further out of the money Mm -hmm. And and get a little less credit, but a lower delta. Maybe maybe my ATR buffer is a little better. And what will happen based on you're selling a five? You're you're basically adjusting at five points, right? It's making it's a legit move quite a bit further out. What's yeah. going to happen is you're going to get closer to three ATRs on the on the ranges, and you're going to give up a little bit of the credit. The question though is how much of that credit are you giving up? And you right. just got to fill out the data. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. So I would be doing the 65 strike. It had a nine delta. Nine delta. I bought the 60. So still $5 wide. Uh, ATR buffer is 2.8. Net credit was 40 cents or $40. The buying power is going to be 460. And again, to the, to the individual that's new to trading, they look at, well, that's just 2.8 versus 2.0. Guys, that's close to 30% more range you're selling. That's right. Correct. Yeah. That's no. one That's one additional day that the market could find support. That's one, uh, one additional day could make or break this trade. Right. Okay. Right. So the question I have for you guys is this, is giving up a little bit of that credit, right? We're not getting the 17%. Now we're just getting the 8.7%. But is giving up a little bit of that credit worth getting a better range? And that's just a question that can be answered personally. Well, and that's exactly right. But uh, what I love about doing it this way visually, and I think this really helps uh, a lot of new traders. I've seen this. I've seen the light bulbs go on. When you list the same potential trade twice and you map out different ways you can play it, it just forces you to examine, okay, what is my cushion? What is my credit? What are the trade-offs here? Because that's the thing about option trading, Tyler. If you want to increase the pot probability, you're going to decrease the credit, but you're going to improve your probability of winning by getting that better cushion like Matt's talking about. So uh, if I was looking at these two spreads, the only way I'm taking the top one, by the way, is if the technicals are pure and I feel like it's as not. much of a delta trade as a theta trade. The yeah. second one's the better theta trade. Well, and I, it would it would be a slam dunk if this was fifty bucks on four fifty. All right, I mean, the, the reality is the only reason this puppy is is yellow uh, at eight point seven. You know, another five ten cents, and it, it would be a slam dunk. Yeah, yeah it, and and to me again, when you look at when you look at it. I just think too many times in credit trades, we make too many decisions over the money we're making and we geek out on how much money we're getting from an ROI perspective in a short time frame. When that to me has, it, it's really not part of the equation for me. 
Mm -hmm. Am I getting, do uh, number one, do I like the technical scenario? Am I in the zone of support where I feel very comfortable? Number two, even if I'm wrong, do I have a range to where I'm going to be right? Sure. Both yeah. of those are far more important to me than, than whatever the ROI you're getting. And I just feel like when we were young traders, not understanding a lot of how that, that was, I, I just feel like, perhaps we didn't take it to the conclusion before we all started trading these things. Yep. It, took, it, it, it took me a little bit of time to figure that out. But I'm from my perspective, the key metric here for me in credit trades, if the ROI is there, perfect. That will, that will take care of itself, mm -hmm. but you need the range. Mm -hmm. Ranges mm -hmm. to me are vital. Well, I agree 100%. And once you start getting a feel on how to pump this data in there, you can start to really paint these pictures and get clarity uh, pretty quickly, actually, which is where I always love to, to map out four, five, six, eight, maybe even 10. If I'm sitting down for a research session, Tyler, I'm going to find a handful of stocks so I can compare them. And that's what yep. we've done here as well. The next step here, we were going to look at a couple of different stocks in their comparisons. Uh, anything last on Roblox before? No, you I, I just, the, the other thing I would do to help bridge the gap between the numbers and the chart is, is I like coming back in and then saying, okay, so I had 70 as my short strike. That was choice one. 65 was choice two and and you'll see the appeal of the 65 over the 70 uh you know i just think think even more obvious here when you look at the chart right 65 60 looks like a pretty good little range there you're, you're you're at the low end of its if its trading range that preceded the breakout you would feel a lot more comfortable with that than the 70 65. Mm -hmm. yeah good point very good point yeah. All right, uh, let's take a look at those other two stocks if we can and kind of pump those numbers in. Uh, these are different types of volatility trades, obviously. I mean, Roblox is a newer company, recent IPO, recent earnings, moving a little bit faster. Slumber J was one we were looking at, a little lower volatility, Tyler. So how would you build this one here? Yeah, so it, it is a little bit lower volatility. Um, nice little bull retracement. A lot of energy stocks have decent, decent pullback patterns. So I wanted to, to cross compare. And, and one thing you could look at, I don't know if um, the Roblox implied volatility for July is about 69%. In comparison, if you look at Schlumberger, it's implied volatility is about 40%. So, you know, it's got two thirds of the volatility of, of Roblox. Um, and in, in fact, why don't we jump actually to Coca-Cola, which is about, I don't know, a quarter of the volatility. This will maybe make the example more extreme, and then uh, depending on time, maybe we may or may not do Plumber J. But let me actually jump to Coca Cola, Tim, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so Coca Cola, same, same, uh, same game here. Stock price fifty five. Uh, this is going to be a July thirty day option as well. Coca Cola has a much smaller ATR for two reasons: one, it's a cheaper stock; two. It's a consumer staple stock, super boring. So 61 cents is what its ATR is. I mean, come on, it moves, it moves one tenth the amount of Roblox, right? So, uh, all right, what, so what am I gonna sell for a credit spread here? Well, uh, I don't wanna sell a 50 Delta, I'll tell you that. So it looks like I'm gonna have to sell a 15 Delta um, and I'll round it up. So we'll call it a 16 Delta. I'm going to sell that. That's the 5250 strike. And then I'll buy the 50 strike. Uh, I would not do a $5 spread on this. I would only do a two and a half wide. 11 cents. 11 cents on a two and a half dollar wide, which means my buying power is 239. So I can remember that. You might have to go back and forth, but I did a 5250, mm -hmm. 50 bull put. I had a 16 net delta. My credit was only 11. My risk was 239. Okay, so so now you can see at the beginning here it looks pretty similar. 16 delta, 16 delta on Roblox. That's that's similar. ATR buffer is way better on Coca-Cola. So they were able to, I was able to go really far out of the money. That part I like. I like that part of this particular trade. Uh, that's a positive takeaway. I'm all the way down at 5250, which again, for a stock like Coca-Cola is way far away, right? Many, many ATRs, four. The, the question though is since I'm so far away, are they, are they paying me enough money? 
to, to still make it worth my while. 11 cents on a $239 cost is only a 4.6% return, which by credit spread standards is very low. That's why it's red, right? That's why it's very, uh, that's why it's red. Mm-hmm. And maybe if my Delta was five, that'd be okay, right? If, if I could sell a five Delta and get almost a 5% return, that'd be a ROID yeah, of gone. 100. Oh yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're gone. But the problem is the Delta is pretty high for only getting the four and a half percent return, which means the ROID sucks. Yeah, it just sucks. So I suspect if I if I understood what Matt was saying earlier, Matt wouldn't take this trade. No, what again, the numbers kind of speak to me. And what you would do is you would be looking to actually be more aggressive with the Delta you're selling. So the opposite conversation we're going to have on Coca-Cola with, uh, in comparison to Roblox now, you are going to see a little bit of generalities here. One, Coca-Cola being a consumer staple stock, Roblox being an extremely aggressive growth stock. And so that's typical, right, yep. when you when you match that. But at the same time, you can still look at the principle and learn from it. And so when I'm looking at an ATR 4.1, I love that. that, that that's, that's beautiful, right? And like, you, and like Tyler, what, like you indicated, if you were getting that buffer with, say, a – even you wouldn't even have to get a five delta. I mean, honestly, 10 delta might get the job done, right? Yeah. But you're just not getting the credit to justify it. And so what you would want to do is you would say, okay, let me play with that buffer a little bit, sell a higher delta strike price and see what that looks like from an ROI. The problem, it's Coca-Cola and what are you going to do? Sell the 5550 delta? What you'd have to do is you'd have to go, you'd have to go to the one of the weeklies, which give you strikes between those two, right? Uh, yeah, but it, then you deal with liquidity issues on on some of those weird strike price that are not traditional strike price differences, right? Yep. And so it, for me, it's like it's Coca Cola. It's much more of a naked put covered call type candidate mm-hmm. than it is a bull put candidate. Mm-hmm. And so I like the example because the example does show you that. On a stock like Coca-Cola, well, credit spreads in general, when you're dealing with low volatility, like people in general say, oh, the VIX is low, so everything's bad. No, 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 no. What that means is you can't do a bull put spread on Coca-Cola. It means you can do a covered call on Coca-Cola. When people talk about low volatility, it's they don't understand how to adjust from a systematic perspective. Coca-Cola is a covered call naked put stock. It is not traditionally a credit trading stock. Roblox, nobody in their right mind would do a covered call on Roblox that has a 60% implied volatility. And so what happens with low volatility environments is things like Coca-Cola that you could have done a bull put spread on in higher volatility times. You can't do that. you got to look at covered calls there. On a stock like Roblox that most likely would have been too volatile to even touch, now you're looking at that as, as bull puts. And so it's just, it's a fascinating thing that I see with volatility. But yeah, the numbers do speak that you would try to sell a higher delta on Coca-Cola to see if you can massage that credit versus HR buffer. Agreed. Agreed. And one of the things I love about the spreadsheet is it visually displays all of that information so that you can uh, kind of understand it better. And who doesn't love the visuals, Matt? I mean, that's the whole thing about data. When you can take data and take it to an actionable step because you better understand something, that's value in my opinion. Well, and and what I love about uh, data-driven metrics like this is too many times we as traders get attached to certain symbols in the marketplace right? Mm -hmm. We like certain names. We don't like certain names. And we have an emotional attachment to that. When you just line up 30 potential credits on different timeframes, you're really just looking at numbers there. And it's the numbers. And I can't tell you how many times I went into research saying, I like Amazon, I like Apple, I like Microsoft. And all of a sudden I found this stock I didn't even know existed, Mm -hmm. right? You got to get to the point with credit trades where you let the numbers do the talking because Directional trades are, are you know, I, I, I give the analogy of the market assassin, right? We're pinpoint with our directional systems. Uh, credit trades are really about 
comfort level. They're really about the ATR zones that you're comfor comfortable with. They're really about, are you getting paid enough credit to justify that type of zone? And so there is some more comfort in terms of where you're selling those strike prices. And so I feel like filling out the data, even though it can be tedious at times, once you get good at it, it's like anything else. It's pretty quick. I agree. Well, um, and and you can do it in your head at some point. Like you start I, to I understand that. Yeah. Oh, finish your point, Ty. Well, it, it just as I've heard you, this was helpful for me because I, I don't know that I've heard you fully explain Royd in the setting I've been in. But, but it, you eventually start to discover what causes you to have a ROID of 100 or a ROID yeah. of 0.8. And you can start to put together and understand you can't sell 10 deltas and get a 1% uh, return. The math doesn't work. You no, know, it doesn't work. One 10%. And so for me, I was able to just pick up some of those connections to where um, it, it will become quicker as I as I do the numbers uh, yeah, you know, moving forward. And, mm -hmm. and personally, when I'm when I'm assessing credits, I, I never fill out the data either, guys. I do everything in my head. But when I'm looking at cross comparison, even today, I still fill out the spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, it's a valuable thing. Uh, if you're out there and you're I watching, I just like the visuals. I love it. I actually love the spreadsheet. So, uh, and I love teaching for well, that. I, I think it really and if helps. You, and if you'll just give me one second, um, mm -hmm. this spreadsheet was designed over years and years, right? Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of people, that, specifically Marius, one of our students, Marius, want to give him a shout out because one day he contacts Tim. He was a former student in Tim's. And one day, you know, we're talking about these things and Mary's like, hey, listen, I, I can help. And he was vital in putting this together for our yeah. community. So Marius, thank you so much for that, for your wonderful help in, in, in doing so. But also, I mean, these are the conversations we have with our community over years mm -hmm. and years and years. And when you look at the spreadsheet, at the bottom, you'll see a couple different types of strategies here. Each theta system has a unique spreadsheet to it because the rules and the metrics are slightly different. And so for covered calls, you have a covered call. Short puts is your naked put. Bull puts, bear calls, iron condors would be the combination of the two credits. Short strangles. Time spreads are your diagonal spreads, your horizontal, your diagonal. You know, Tyler, you love your calendar spreads, right? That would be your your more of your calendar spread type. And then at the bottom, you have some resource links. We will update these. But these are just some helpful things we've done over time uh, to uh, explain certain things. Love it. Love it, guys. Yep. Uh, you can find those journals uh, on the Trade Center tab over at Tackle Trading. Uh, get the download if you have any questions. Or and if anybody, it. hold on, sorry to interrupt, yeah, knows yeah. how to write a script from Thinkorswim to automate the journals, I would like to talk to you. I would love to have that convo as well.